All right, but politics aside, the markets gave a thumbs down to the budget as well, with the Sensex and Nifty nose diving to a three-month low. The Sensex shut shop at 290 points down, and the Nifty closed over 100 points down. Investor sentiment was also spooked because rules were tightened for those investors based in Mauritius seeking to avoid double taxation. According to the finance minister, overseas investors will also have to provide proof that they are the final beneficiaries of any profits apart from the tax residency certificate. So were the markets here spooked by the super rich tax? CNBC TV 18's managing editor Uday Mukherjee gives us his take. Well, the surcharge going up from 5 to 10 percent does affect earnings by 1.5 percent. And to that extent, it is a disappointing move, uh, maybe unavoidable from his perspective. The super tax rate, I don't think, matters so much. Uh, it's for 40,000 people in this country, and it's fine for people who earn more than a crore a year to be penalized a little bit more. I don't think that should bother the market too much. I'll tell you what the market is most disappointed about. It's the problem of growth and rekindling the investment cycle. That is what India's big problem is right now. The fact that growth is slipping and slipping to 5% if the CSO is to be believed. Do we have a recipe to arrest that declining growth and to turn it around? And today's budget was woefully short on any kind of imaginative measures to get growth restarted once again. Also on the investment cycle, which is key to restocking growth in India, he attempted a few small things like May, the investment allowance of 15%, putting a road regulator, announcing that implementation of 3,000 kilometers of roads will happen over the next six months. These are small steps, but they will not achieve, I think, the great objective or the greater objective of rekindling the completely comatose investment cycle that we have at this point in time. And as long as investors are not convinced that India gets its growth back on track and its investment cycle back on track, there is no way this market can move beyond the point just fueled by global money. So I think if there is one big disappointment in this budget, it's on this aspect that people expected more from Chidambaram being who he is and what he has been promising on the aspect of growth and he may just have come up short on that, on, on that score. Meanwhile, international credit ratings agencies Standard & Poor's and Fitch have said that India's 2013-14 financial budget will not hamper its sovereign rating for India. In fact, S&P said the budget was a prudent one, while Fitch said the adherence to fiscal consolidation remains encouraging. The agencies, which had last year threatened to downgrade the sovereign rating to junk status, appreciated that the Indian financial budget this year had projected fiscal deficit at 5.2 and 4.8 percent, respectively, for this fiscal and next, keeping in view of the economic, weak economic situation and the upcoming elections.